let's move on here, Ben, to to another story that came down um, on Monday. Uh, very interesting. We had Super Wild Card Weekend, six games being played, and somehow the team that was of the talk of the town on Monday was a team not even involved, and that was the Philadelphia Eagles who fired their Super Bowl winning coach, Doug Peterson. Ben, what do you know about that situation and, and possibly the Eagles' mindset? Well, um, the Eagles weren't necessarily going into that meeting looking to fire Doug. Um, I can okay. tell you that uh, after the conversation that they had, it became apparent that not everybody was on the same page, and, and that's what needed to happen. Doug Peterson felt like that he wasn't really allowed to coach uh, in the way that he wanted to coach. He felt dictated to by ownership in the front office, uh, and he felt like he wasn't really able to do what it is that he wanted and needed to do as a coach and have the autonomy as a head coach that he needed to have, whether, whether you agree with that or not. Um, that was his stance on it. And the ownership in the front office feels like that, uh, that it's a collective decision and that, um, you know, that, that they need to be involved. And sometimes they are going to dictate some things to the head coach. And right. they, they just realized that they were at an impasse and uh, decided to part ways. It, it's fascinating, Ben, because Doug Peterson, he's a career winning coach, 42 and 37 regular season record. It's not great, obviously hampered uh, by this past season. Uh, but four and two in the playoffs, and of course, a Super Bowl win in in that city of Philadelphia. Although Ben, it didn't seem like Doug was as beloved in that city by both the fan base, um, I guess, or the organization, having just recently won a Super Bowl. I guess the question on a lot of people's minds is Howie Roseman. Um, is he is he a part of these power broker conversations? Is he safe? Um, and and if not, uh, or I'm sorry, if, if he is safe. Um, any any clue as to where they're looking in terms of a replacement for Doug Peterson? Well, yeah, how is safe for now, um, and, and and will be for this hire. Uh, if this hire flames out, he he'll, he'll be in trouble. Uh, I tell you, his you know some of his personnel evaluations haven't gone the way they needed it to, and uh, there's some disagreements on that. That said, you know, Howie Roseman and. Uh, uh, and some of those guys in, in ownership and in the front office believed that Jordan Jefferson should have been their pick last year. Doug Peterson convinced them they needed the speed on the field of Jalen Rager. Um, and so, th you know, there's there's uh, th there are some, you know, some, some differences of opinion or were some differences of opinion uh, with what should be done uh, in terms of uh, the uh, the draft and things like that. You can't have those kind of disagreements, those kind of differences um, and, and then so heads not roll, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I think that, I think people need to understand that, uh, everybody there wants to win. There just might be a disagreement on how to do that. And so that's where we're at with this. I think that, uh, obviously how he's safe for now. Um, but you know, he's got to, he's got to show that the things that he wanted to come through need to work as well. Sure. Um, as far as looking for replacements, they, they are. Um, they reached out to Oklahoma head coach Lincoln Riley. I don't think that's wow. going to happen, but they yeah. reached out to him. Uh, Arthur Smith is a name that, that I would suggest is heavily, heavily favored right now. Now uh, that could change after they do some interviews and all that. Uh, but um, as far as the, the cheat sheet pre favorites, I would say that he's on the list as, as being a favorite. They're going to talk to Todd Bowles as well. Um, okay. Uh, and, and there's, there'll be some other names that'll come up on the list as, as we go on. But, um, I would suggest that Arthur Smith is probably the leader of the clubhouse before they do the interviews. Interesting. And guys, just going back to our conversation about making sure you know where you're getting information from everything Ben has said, um, is something that here at pro football network, our other insider, Tony Pauline reported to us back in September, uh, that Doug, you know, has been a little bit on shaky ground, both himself uh, feeling like his time has run its course in Philly and apparently also the way the organization feels. It's just very interesting stuff going on in the city of brotherly love. My last question on this for you, Ben, before we move on is um, either your opinion or if you know something, what does this mean for Carson Wentz? Well, if you bring on Arthur Smith, uh, I, I would suggest that that would mean that you'd be keeping Carson Wentz and probably trying to rehab his career. Um, you know, Arthur Smith made his name uh, turning Ryan Tannehill around. Uh, right. So, you know, I would suggest that 
uh, th- that would be the direction they would go. If it's uh, if you know if it were to be like, for instance, Lincoln Riley, who obviously has a connection to Jalen Hurts, uh, then they maybe you go in a different direction. I didn't think that Jalen Hurts. I mean, there was a definite uh, uptick in the uh, in the offense in terms of kind of an energy when he was out there. Sure, but I, I didn't. You know, I, I think the legend of Jalen Hurts outpaced the actual production of Jalen Hurts. You go back and look; he was like a fifty percent passer. Um, it, it, w- it wasn't all that great. Um, that's not to say he couldn't grow into being something great, but it really wasn't you know, as good as people were saying was, in fact, he was completing passes at a lower rate than Carson Wentz. He just happened to have the legs to be able to bail him out of some things. So, you know, the the Eagles have got to fix that offensive line. Three years ago, they had the best offensive line in football. Now it's in shambles. Uh, And that's really going to be where you need to start that rebuild in order to, uh, in order to put a successful product back on the field that, and you've got to fix that secondary. That secondary is terrible.